Hello guys, it's really nice to see you again. Uh, I know it's been a while, but you know, summer is a difficult time for me to generate videos because I have to visit my family and I have to travel to one place and the other. So it's really complicated for me to, to create content. But summer is over and I'm so back. So, so yeah, I'm going to show you the project that I've been working on for the last couple of days. It's called Agentic Patterns and it's a from scratch implementation of the four agentic patterns as defined by deeplearning.ai. If you go to the readme in the repository, which by the way, I'm going to leave in the description of the video, you will see that there are four agentic patterns, the reflection pattern, the tool use pattern, the planning pattern, and the multi-agent pattern. Today we are going to start with a reflection pattern. We are going to implement from scratch this pattern, but in the next videos, because this is going to be a video series, in the next videos we are going to implement the remaining patterns. That is the tool use, the planning, and the multi-agent pattern. Let me explain to you uh, very simply what uh, what's the basics of this reflection pattern. So as we were saying in today's video, we are going to focus on this pattern right here, the reflection pattern, which is the most basic, but at the same time, the results are quite interesting in terms of the LLM results. So this diagram showcases the inner loop that we are going to find in this reflection pattern. So you can see there are two main blocks, the generate block right here and the reflect block. And what we are going to do, I mean, the workflow of this pattern is the following. So suppose uh, the user provides a prompt, like for example, generate an essay about something, let's say Vivaldi, for example, the composer. Okay, so this is the user prompt, all right? This user prompt is going to be received by the LLM. In this case, I'm going to use uh, Grok. But yeah, we are going to, this block is going to receive this prompt. And what it's going to do is basically generate an essay about Vivaldi. I mean, this is uh, like a very zero shot uh, prompting style. It's um, really simple. And the essay, uh, is this uh, text file that you can see right here. This icon portraits the, the result of this generate block. After that, the result is going to be sent into the reflect block. And this reflect block is going to provide some critique, some feedback to the generate block. You can see in here, this icon right here, what the LLM is going to provide some suggestions, some modifications, etc. To the original content. After that, the result of this critique is going to be sent again to the generate block. And now the generate block is going to generate another version of the TXT of this essay, but taking into consideration all the critique, all the feedback that the reflect block sent to it. Okay, so now it's going to generate a V2 of this TXT. Okay, and the loop will continue over and over. Generally, you can uh, stop the loop with two, uh, using two ways. Uh, the first way is to use an n number of steps, like for example, keep it rating for 10 steps and then stop the loop. And another way is to define some stop keywords. Like for example, suppose that in the reflect block, we say that um, in the system prompt on, of this LLM, we could say something like, um, when you think that the result or the essay, the, the essay about, Bibel, about Bibaldi is good enough, you can generate uh, this string, this stop string, for example, or you can generate something like, okay, and when during the iteration, we receive any of these stop strings, we will stop the iteration, basically, and the, the loop will finish. Okay, so uh, this is, I know this is very theoretical, but I want you to really understand the, um, the inner workings of this pattern, because, uh, I mean, you can possibly apply this simple pattern to many of your LLM calls, 
and I can assure you that it will probably improve the results by a lot. Okay, so now that we have all of this covered, all the theory covered, I think it's time to go to the code. So the first thing you will need to do is to simply clone this uh, repository and we will be working with two main folders. The first folder, well, let me show you in VS Code. So the first folder that you're going to work with is the notebooks folder. This notebooks contains just a reflection pattern at this time, but as time goes by, you will see uh, more notebooks inside this folder as I continue to develop this project. And then we will also work with this uh, folder in here, uh, the reflection pattern folder inside this directory, which contains like a proper implementation in Python. But we will start with the notebook where I will give you some easy to understand implementation of, the, of this pattern. And after that, we will move into the Python implementation. Right. So once you have the repository installed, you can simply start uh, Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook and work with me in this uh, notebook. So the reflection pattern, as we said before, um, is a pattern that allows the, the LLM to reflect and critique its outputs. As you can see, we are using the same diagram for the reflection pattern. And it follows the next steps that we already know. So the LLM, the first step, the LLM generates a candidate output. And the second step, which is this three step here in the diagram, the LLM reflects on the previous output. And finally, the LLM modifies the original output based on the reflections and another iteration begins. So we already know that. Uh, so now it's time to, to implement. Okay, so we will start with the first generation step, like an easy to go implementation of this step so that you can really appreciate the way that the output is going to be refined and is going to be improved in the different steps. So in this generation step, we are going to ask the LLM to generate an implementation of a very common, a very famous sorting algorithm, which is called the merge sort, okay? We'll be using Brock, as I told you before, and in particular, we will use the Llama 3 70 billion model. Okay, so let's uh, import relevant uh, packages and clients. In this case, the important one is the, the client. Okay, by the way, uh, you can see here that I'm loading all the environment variables. Uh, let me remind you that you will need the Grok API key. I'm not going to get into the .env, but as you can imagine, you will need a Grok API key defined in this environment variables file for everything to work. Okay, so let's begin then, and let's generate a system prompt. In this case, we are going to tell the generate block to behave as a Python programmer tasked with generating high quality Python code. Your task is to generate the best content possible for the user's request. If the user provides critique, respond with a revised version of your previous attempt. Okay, so this is going to be the, the system prompt for this block over here. Okay, for the generate block. Right, now we are going to continue and we are going to add another prompt, in this case a user prompt into the generation chat history, into the history of messages for the for the generate block. And in this case, the content is going to be the user content. Uh, generate a Python implementation of the merge sort algorithm. Okay, so finally, we are just going to uh, generate the, the Python implementation and we are going to append the result as an assistant role because this is the response from the LLM uh, to the chat history as well. Okay. Now simply display the markdown to see the first uh, step that we are going to find. So as you can see, uh, here's a Python implementation of the merge sort algorithm. And you can see that it makes uh, sense more or less. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. We have two functions defined, the merge sort function and also the merge function. And we have some example usage, which is really cool as well. Now let's get into the reflection step. Remember that the reflection step 
is in here and it will reflect on the code generated by the previous step okay it will reflect it will provide feedback to this step to this content sorry to this content in here Okay, as you can see, uh, this is a picture of Andre Carpathy. I thought it would be funny for the LLM to behave as Andre Carpathy when, when it provides feedback to the generate block. So that's what I did. Um, as you can see, the content, uh, well, the, the system prompt for this block, for the generation block, states that you are Andre Carpathy, an experienced computer scientist, and you are tasked with generating critique and recommendations for the user's code. So we are going to uh, put the system prompt into the reflection chat history. Just uh, notice in here that we have to use two different um, histories, one for the generation block and another for the reflection block, which are represented by two Python lists, by the way. So now let's put the reflection chat history and let's generate a critique to the Python code. Let's generate this uh, feedback. Okay, so let's see what Carpathy has to say. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of things uh, in here. Uh, so code organization and comments, uh, your code is well organized, blah, blah, blah. But uh, consider adding a blank line between the function signature. Okay, some minor details, uh, naming conventions, which is a good remark, uh, recursion, merge function, um, some complaints about performance, uh, the example usage which seems to be okay yeah but it says that um, we should add more test cases to demonstrate the robustness of your implementation which sounds sensible and yeah a minor nitpicks and here we have a very beautiful um, implementation or revised implementation of the same function As you can see there are some doc strings and yeah doc strings in the two functions and as well like some sample usage this is the previous one i think and more additional test cases okay so now let's add um, this system prompt into the generation chat history and as you can see we have ended uh, the first step okay this first step and now we will start again in here we will start again another step uh, where the generation block is going to use the feedback provided by the reflection block. So that's really easy to do. We just need to pass the updated generation chat history into the generation block and simply display the result. Okay, so as you can see, um, the generation block has uh, generated some revised code. It implements the mesh short again, but with Doc strings and the merge again with doc strings and it provides some additional tests and example usage. And now the iteration will continue. I mean, we could create another section in a notebook where we will generate uh, another generation step two, where we will uh, reflect on the output from the generation block once again but the loop will continue over and over so what i did is to implement a python class that reflects in a much better way this reflection pattern and as you can see here we are importing this reflection agent from the library from uh, agentic patterns this is really easy to do i mean you just need to go to to VS Code or to PyCharm and install the package using Poetry. In this case, I'm using Poetry for all the dependency management and all the, the packaging of the Python, of the Python package. And once this is installed, you will be able to access the classes that I will be defining. But let me show you the class that um, I implemented for this. It's called the Reflection Agent, as we saw. And it's really easy to understand, uh, I think, at least, but you can leave me your impressions in the comments. But it just defines one generate method that simply generates the, the code, the, the match short code, is we, if we keep uh, using the example. And then it also implements a reflect method, which reflects on the generation by generating a critique or feedback for the generation block as we saw in the notebook but this is like a proper implementation in python 
It also uses uh, Sun Colorama, as you will see, to create beautiful uh, login colors uh, when we print the outputs. I think it's, uh, I mean, I, I think it improves like the readability of the of the login. And finally, the run method, which is the main entry point of this class, where you will pass the generation system prompt, as we defined in the notebook, the reflection system prompt, a user prompt, the maximum number of steps for the iteration to run, and a verbosity level. And it will basically implement everything that we have defined in the notebook. So it will generate the generation history list and also the reflection history list and it will start iterating over the number of steps. This fancy step tracker is just a helper tool for all the Colorama stuff for printing visuals and then we will generate oops, sorry uh, we will generate the output based on generation history we will update the histories and we will reflect and critique the generation and the loop will keep going and going until the iteration stops. Okay, so let's see this in action. Let's simply uh, import the reflection agent from agentic patterns. Let's instantiate the agent and let's define the basic prompts that we have defined previously, but let's redefine them for, for clarity. So first of all, the generation system prompt, we are going to, we just copy and paste it, the previous prompt, then the reflection system prompt, we just copy and paste it again, and finally the prompt or the user prompt, if you want to be more precise on the naming, which is the Python implementation of the merge sort algorithm, and now we're just going to run this agent, okay? And as you will see, it's going to start iterating over the different steps, so first step, generation block this is the output of the generation block in blue then the reflection output of the reflection block in green and we keep going so second step and we generate the python code again with all the feedback provided by the reflection block and we keep going and going and going and here we have the final result this is the last generation. You can uh, think of it as the best generation so far before we stopped the loop at the three steps. Uh, and yeah, you can see that the LLM is responding to the reflection um, to the reflection block by saying that it's going to incorporate some brief explanation of merge short, which I guess it's incorporated here in the doc stream. Uh, it's also adding the time complexity, space complexity, etc. And it's creating, as you can see here, this main function when it's going to put this example usage and also calling the, the main function uh, directly from here. OK, so this is the end of this quick explanation of the reflection pattern. I hope you have learned something new today. If you like the content, uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, click the like button. Also, if you like this project, I will ask you to give me a start in GitHub. It helps me a lot and it takes a lot of time to create all of these projects. So I will really appreciate it. And apart from that, I guess I'll see you in the next video. So until then, have a very nice evening.